So we're back with another jewellery sale preview for our next jewellery sale on the 2nd of June. We've got something a bit more niche to show you um, towards the end of this uh, video, so keep um, an eye open for that. We'll dive straight in with some of the jewellery that we've got um, and most of it here is Victorian jewellery. We haven't had um, this sort for a long time, so I thought I would show it to you. Um, we start off here all with lovely, amazing boxes. Lot 1121 is um, a pair of Victorian Etruscan Revival earrings. So this was um, a period in um, the Victorian era where um, jewellers and craftsmen were um, advancing their technologies and um, they were able to um, create a lot more elaborate designs. And they took a lot of their designs from um, ancient Greece and um, Rome as well. And these were the sort of designs that they came up with. And it's, most, it's very heavily centered on um, rope twist designs and um, very simplistic um, designs as well. Uh, this pair is circa 1850. Um, so right at the beginning of the Victorian period. Um, and it was um, created as well before the Victorian era. Um, this pair um, is in the sale as lot 1121. The next group that we have here, this is the next brooch, lot 1108. This is French and it's got uh, lovely turquoise and rose cut diamonds. And this is a brooch, as you can see. Um, this one will be, again, 19th century. It is missing a few small turquoise there, but beautiful small piece um, as an accent to any, um, any outfit. The next piece that we have here is some more Victorian jewellery. This is lot 1118. This is Whitby Jet, um, the entire locket, and it's got an applied gold pearl monogram. And this is the period in where the Victorians um, went into mourning. So this was when Prince Albert um, died in 1861. Um, and Queen Victoria started wearing a lot of mourning jewellery, so a lot of black, um, and that translated over into, into um, what the people were wearing as well, um, following the mourning. And if we open it here, you can see um, this is a mourning locket with um, an original wisp of hair. And that'll be circa 1880, but it's quite a heavy piece as well, made, up, made out of a solid lump of jet. So that's quite unusual. The next that we have here is 1107. And again, this is right on uh, the point at where um, Prince Albert would have died um, in 1861. A typical Victorian blue enamel and pearl heart locket. And sometimes the pearls um, were used in mourning jewelry to signify um, a child as well as they, they signified tears. And then you can see on the back here that it's got um, an open locket backing, perhaps for a locket of hair, or now probably a photograph would be used. But that's really sweet as well, nice small size. Uh, the next here is quite similar, lot 1106. Again, you can see actually if we compare them side by side here, virtually exactly the same period of time. Um, the, the snake was used as quite an, an important symbol in Victorian jewellery, sometimes um, as um, Ouroboros, which is a snake eating its own tail to symbolise eternal life. And this one's set with a diamond right in the centre. Again, blue enamel with a lovely heart locket backing. And that one again is circa 1880. Then we have Another amazing piece here, typical of the slightly later Victorian period. So this one will be 1880 to 1890. This is lot 1184. It's an 18 karat gold diamond and pearl crescent moon brooch. And if that isn't quite large enough for you, well then take a look at this one. 1111 in the 2nd of June sale. Absolute whopper of a piece. <laughs> 
tons. These are all diamonds with rose cuts and old cut diamonds with a small star in the center of the crescent there as well. This is all in gold and silver. And there's about 2.9 carats of diamonds in total there. So just under three carats in total. Beautiful piece. That's a, a real rarity. And then 1110, again, this will be near turn of the century now. So 1890 or so, a natural pearl and diamond flower head spiral. Uh, it's now a pendant necklace. But if we turn it over here, you can see that it did once have a brooch or pin fitting on the back. So it probably was um, another piece of jewellery, which again, the Victorians were very good at recycling jewellery. So they made it into various pieces at once. So you could wear it as a pendant, you could wear it as a brooch. Um, they were extremely good pioneers of, of doing that in jewellery. But that's, again, very beautiful and it's on a more modern nine karat gold chain. And then the end of the jewellery on this tray. This is again turn of the century, so about 1900 in date. A lot of symbolism here again. This is a hunting horn with a horseshoe, a pearl set horseshoe on the front. This is all in 15 karat gold. But it's just really superb quality. And it's got a white gold um, mouthpiece on the back of it as well. And um, that, that one's engraved as well with its original um, safety clasp. But beautiful hunting piece of jewelry. And then um, coming up to something extremely more modern. You can probably tell what it is without even, <laughs> even needing to show you it um, from the bag. This is Tiffany & Co. That typical Tiffany baby blue. And if we tip it out here, this is an amethyst drop pendant necklace. And this is designed by Paloma Picasso, who did a lot of designing for Tiffany & Co. And this one is signed on the clasp as well. Obviously it's in its original pouch but a very simplistic 18 karat gold pendant. And then we have some really interesting watches in this sale. I've just selected a few for you to see now. Um, the first in the sale is this large box at the back, a Jaeger Le Coutre. This is lot 1000. And it is a Reverso Duo face. These are always extremely um, tactile watches the reversos. As you can see here, um, the main dial is silvered and this is called a day and night model. So this dial you would wear during the day and then what you do here is you can flip up the dial, it slides along and then you clip it back down again. And you have another dial altogether and this is the night dial. So black and it has luminous hours and hands as well. So the you can see it in the dark, but I think that's really amazing. It's just the clicking sound as well. It's brilliant. And that's in its original box with the papers, the full set, which is exactly what you want if you're collecting this sort of thing, on its original Jaeger strap and clasp. And that's all working as well. Fantastic piece to have there as um, the start of the sale. And then we um, go shortly after that, the next lot, 1001, is the first Rolex in the sale. This is, lot, this is reference 1500 and it's circa 1966. So the magic year for us Brits winning the World Cup. This, I reckon this may have been um, some sort of celebration for, <laughs> winning, for England winning the World Cup at that point, the football. Um, this is a Rolex Air King date. Um, this is quite a typical model for that sort of period. Um, but this one is slightly separated out from the rest in that it has um, Arabic numerals at the six and nine. And it also has um, a nice magnified date aperture as well. And that's all in stainless steel. Again, with its original box and the receipts along with some service receipts as well. 
um, so the full set that you want there. And then 1002, this again is um, slightly by Rolex, it's, it's a Tudor, so a Rolex subsidiary model. This is a vintage Tudor um, Submariner, it's an Oyster Prince, and this again is an automatic model. It's reference 7928, and it's 1967 in date, so just a one year older, sorry, one year younger <laughs> than the Rolex. Um, and again, that's in full working order. It's on a slightly different NATO style strap, so it'd probably um, be good to get that one onto a, a leather, or maybe a, if you can find a steel um, oyster strap. But that's, a, again, another very rare wristwatch. Um, and then the, the last watch that we have here, lot 1009, this is typical of the 1970s and um, this is a Zenith, it's an automatic watch, and it's a Pilot Surf um, wristwatch, that's the model name. Um, and this one is interesting because it has a tropical dial, so that sort of copperish overtone that you can see on the dial here as you move under the light, um, that is only achieved by um, exposing it to sunlight and then the, the metal on the actual dial starts to tinge this lovely copper colouring. And that only happens over time from wearing it out in the sunlight. And I just think that's fantastic to see that that's been genuinely worn. And that's lot 1009 in the sale. And then onto the really niche thing. This is the first lot of jewellery <laughs> in the sale. It's lot 1100 and I don't think you'll find another one. So here it is. This is a really unusual, completely handmade Dalmatian brooch <laughs> for the dog lover. And um, this has come from um, a deceased estate, but it's someone who used to be um, a, a judge on crufts which is extremely interesting. And also you can, you can tell from that why they, they wanted a Dalmatian brooch. Um, but it's really well made. It's all in 18 karat gold with rubies as well. And all the Dalmatian spots are hand painted with enamel. But what an unusual piece of jewelry. Like I say, you'll never see another one. Um, and that really wraps up the jewellery um, video. So it's all online now. If you want to go and take a look, it's all on our website at burstow.co.uk. Uh, the jewellery the sale is on the 2nd of June and it starts at 10 o'clock in the morning. So we hope to see you there. Thank you very much.